This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Oh my goodness, it's that time of the week already, Mason. It really sneaks up on us, doesn't it? James. Yeah, what's up? Do you want to play a game? What kind of a game? N- Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Uh, you know, I have it. And, I, and I've barely touched it. I know it's something I have to get into. So, yes, I do want to play Breath of the Wild, Mason. Good. It's won many awards. <laughs> <laughs> this is my jigsaw impression. I it's know, yeah. really good. Hadn't, hadn't thought about it until we started. And also, he wasn't on a, thinking about it while I was doing it either. And you're on a little tricycle. Yeah. He, he right. rolled into the studio on yeah. that. Yeah. He's got a lot of... He's got a lot of... There's a lot of pageantry to that man, isn't there? It really there? is. He's got <laughs> he's got a puppet. He's got some robes. Yeah. He's got shotguns. Oh, he's got it all. He's got it all. I made a little bit of a list And here. you can have it all too, folks. <laughs> he would have made a great motivational speaker. He definitely would folks, have. Folks, you can have it all. And if you don't attempt to have it all, I'll kill you. <laughs> because you're not making the most of your life. That's why I'm killing you. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Uh, anyway, leave a like if you want. But yeah, I wrote, he's a real craftsman. He's doing puppets. <laughs> he's doing various escape rooms and traps. Uh, he's, he puts a puppet on a little tricycle. It's remote controlled, so the mouth's moving by itself. It's incredible. He made a little bathroom. See, it's got tiles. Oh. Carrie Elwes is wearing his little blue shirt. Like, it is yeah. to the letter. It's like cosplayers. Like, when you think about it, you know, they're, they're, you see a cosplay outfit and you're like, mm. oh, they had to learn 3D printing. They had to learn, like, yeah. pattern cutting and sewing and, yeah. and like, electronic stuff. Also, and mate, he's got a brain tumour that's <laughs> killing him fairly rapidly. That's what I'm talking about. We're you're, talking about the movie Saw, We're talking about the movie Saw. It's in the title. But, oh, like, <laughs> you're, 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 on a, you're on the clock, mate. Yeah. I mean, look. You go out, you buy a nice, you know, black silk lined robe oh my God, with red I'm on the curious. inside. But look, if you're making a little bathroom, just use a shoebox. You don't need to tile it. You know what I mean? It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe he's a visual learner. I don't know what he's but up to. But I mean, to. as we learn in this movie, he is, he is always watching his yeah. victims and whatever. Yeah. So maybe when the police show up and they're like, oh, look at the craftsmanship, he's like, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, proud of that. Actually. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I put them, I put my, made the tiles in a little kiln. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like a lot of this stuff would be something you'd present at like a psychopath's convention. Like it's under a oh, sheet. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, So yeah. maybe that's how he also recruits people to help him because that happens, of, of course, in later movies where he's like, look, I know, just to get you on board, I've made this little this little yeah. wide-up puppet. But I wonder, I, I feel like also maybe he's, he'd be the guy that would, would leave the psychopath convention in, dis, like, in disgust. <laughs> Because there'd be too many questions. They'd be, he'd be like, "Yes," and then then they have to they have to run really quickly through the the razor the, the razor wire to escape. Okay. And how do they escape? Oh, they don't. They just they bleed out. I think. So, w- for what reason? What's the lesson? To learned? learn to value their life. But they're dying. They're dead. They're dying, aren't they? You've killed them. You don't appreciate my genius at all. We don't, <laughs> quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> but that's the thing about Jigsaw. There is nothing fair about him. Mm. The scenarios he puts most people in, they're impossible. Yeah. You've, you've put them in impossible scenarios here. Like the shoddy scenario. Like the shoddy scenario. What are you going to learn about your life? <laughs> <laughs> really dive into every aspect of your life, otherwise I'll kill you. But if you're not cautiously walking down every corridor, <laughs> staring down near your feet just in case you walk past a wire that sets off all those shoddies... Yeah. You know, don't blame me. Exactly. That's your fault. Also, he's picking on the mentally ill. There's a guy who's cutting himself because he's clearly having personal problems. And he's like, well, you like to cut yourself, do you? What, do I put you in a big box of wire? Do you like cutting yourself now? No. No, I didn't before <laughs> either. And there's, you know, the receptionist from Becca. Yes. He tried to kill her because she was a drug addict. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. I mean, she didn't die. Yeah. No thanks to him, obviously. That's right. Yeah. I think... You know, bow, biddly, bow, bow. Bow, bow. <laughs> we love the TV show Becca We do, here. it's true, we love it. We're a couple of Becca boys over here. We certainly here. are, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to mention that quickly because what kind of bullshit is it also where the key to unlock your cuffs is in the bath with you at the start and it just goes down the drain and it's like, you missed it. You know when you, you woke yeah. up? You missed it. You missed it, sorry. <laughs> it's like those old adventure games, like your, your, your Sierra point and click adventure games. And yeah. it's like, oh, you got to the end of the game, but um, you missed out on something on the first screen, so you're going to have to start again. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, there is actually a reason for it, though. Oh. And we'll get to it, because we are doing the first three saws. Yeah. For now. Well, we'll here's the we'll thing. That's why, uh, you know, I, I know that this movie, it cost a million dollars to make, yep. and they made like a hundred million dollars. Crazy, so yeah. Obviously, they're going to do a lot of sequels, and I imagine most of the sequels are post hoc explaining 
things that happened yes. in the first movie that didn't make any sense. Because this is a movie that operates on what I believe is called fridge logic, right. where you watch it and you go, man, this is thrilling and exciting. Oh, yeah. this villain, oh, he's, he's got every angle covered. And then later in the night, you go to your fridge and you open the fridge and you're like, hey, wait a minute. Mm. I forgot to buy milk. But also... <laughs> That thing with the key. Yeah. But also, it turned out he was on the ground in the middle of the uh, floor the whole time, yep. but he wasn't breathing or moving at all no. at any point. And he also must have dunked Lee Whannell, who wrote this movie, who I actually interviewed once, very nice man. I remember that. He must have dunked him in the water and then lay on the floor and then be like, shit, I hope that guy wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> right. But also he had... But also a- it doesn't matter if he doesn't. No. <laughs> but also he had a little remote control yep. that he was triggering yep. to, to electrify their shackles. So so two guys in a room who are absolutely alert for literally anything <laughs> happening in a room, any clue that could help them escape. Yeah. And at no point are like, I think that guy's alive actually. <laughs> He's probably alive. So I imagine in the next one they're going to be like, well, actually he had... He, he took a... One of those pills from a comic book where you, it slowed down his metabolism just slow, just oh. slow enough that he knew exactly what was happening at all times in the room and could operate his little zappy machine, but also he he didn't you couldn't see him breathe or move. Also, or anything. the zappy machine must have had two buttons on it because there's two trigger points That's in the true, room, yeah, yeah. and he must have known which is which. Yeah, and he's not looking at it. That's true. They probably would have been different shapes, I'd imagine. Anyway, we'll come <laughs> back, I guess, to the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's related to something in Saw Three. Ah, so okay. when we get to that in a few weeks, for, we'll come for, back for for, uh, for the for the listeners. I've only seen Saw One, mm-hmm. and then I skip right down to Jigsaw. Wow. So I missed everything in between, which is the most recent one prior to Spiral. I saw Saw at the cinemas, and then I saw Saw Two, I think, on DVD. And then, but I don't remember it other than <laughs> Donnie Wahlberg is in it, and then I've never seen any other Saw. Ha. Huh. So yeah. Looking forward to the adventures of Donnie Wahlberg. A couple next of aficionados right here. That's you what know we are. that. Yeah. Well, that's why I was excited to get into this because it's a very complicated and nonsense law. And also, this to be clear, mm. I enjoyed this. I oh yeah, you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Caravan uh-huh. of Garbage. And most people know this at this point. It's it's whatever. <laughs> Like there's a new Saw movie coming out. If you've already put a comment in the in the comments about how much we obviously hated this yeah. already before, well, we should have said this early. We did enjoy this. Tell it to Rotten Tomatoes with its something like 49% on there really? or whatever. Yeah, really surprised okay. me. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, this was going to go straight to DVD, but after great screenings, they then went, you know what, let's make it a cinematic release. And it actually got started because director James Wan, who people would know. Aquaman. Most, Aquaman, that's right. He's done a Fast and the Furious. He's done Conjuring franchise. He's done a bunch of great stuff. Him and Lee were now wanted to make a film after they finished film school, but they can only afford one room. So they challenged themselves to create a film uh, that only occurred in one room. And what oh, I, they failed because there's a bunch of different locations yeah, in this movie. Get them out of Hollywood. <laughs> Well, like, holy weird, because I let anybody and even guys who said they would make a movie in one room and they didn't. Right. Did you see the, the short film, though, that started it all? No. That they made, yeah. It stars Lee Whannell and it's just basically like, huh. it, it, it got it all started, essentially, yeah. So what I think this does well is a couple of things. Well, I think it does well. Mm, a couple on. of things that I think it does well. <laughs> well, I was, I was talking well, about Well, I'm going to say, look, I, because you're obviously going to say this, it does really well two men with fairly unconvincing American accents yelling at each other for 90 <laughs> minutes. It does that quite well. Sure. And I'm like, huh, Carrie Ellis is from England. I didn't. I don't think I knew that Lee Whannell was Australian when I saw this. Huh. So, yeah, it didn't, uh, that didn't, it didn't bother me. I don't know whether it bothered you, obviously, Mason. Intensely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intensely. No, but a couple of things that I think it does like, well. What's, what's, what's the secret here? Is this why they're being tested? Is this why the Saw Killer's <laughs> trying to kill them? Because they've spent their entire lives faking American accents? Is that why? <laughs> it might be. You will learn to use your real accents. Oh, man. I mean... It's what? truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... There's a few tributes here. For example, Mad Max, the saw your leg off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Um, if for people who don't know, saw in Australia was actually officially called saw your leg off, mate. What are you? <laughs> that's right. I don't know if people know that, but that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Dario Argento, there's like nods to his films as well. There's oh. a bunch of nods in this. Is but there what- any Princess Bride references? Besides so. Carrie Elwes being in this movie? <laughs> besides besides an actor from both of the properties. Yeah, that's a little Easter egg for fans of The Princess Bride. <laughs> One of the guys from The Princess Bride is in this. We probably would have got a comment, so I'm actually glad you did bring that up. Mm-hmm. But I also, but the second thing I think this does well is it hides its budget really well. Yeah. You, you can see the seams, especially when you know that it is a million-dollar film, mm. but things like they only had Danny Glover for two days, and, and you wouldn't know that because he's in a variety of different scenes. Yeah. Some of the footage also that they use to kind of padded out they changed to security footage because ah, they yep. didn't have all the complete shots that they needed there's things like they couldn't break both of the saws they were using to saw through the chain so they had to like pretend to saw 
Do you know what ah. I mean? Uh, and those are fifty thousand dollar hacksaws. Exactly, and and the driving scene, the very brief one that there is, and you, it's hilarious when you actually know this. They're just sitting in a darkened warehouse with a smoke machine, just like turning the wheel furiously. Ah. Do they have that classic man walking past the side <laughs> of the car with a flashlight, just I, back and forth? I don't think they do. Wow. Another takeaway from this for me though is. Nobody can throw or catch in that room. It's <laughs> so true, yeah. If Ben, who edits this, if you could put in a little montage, that'd be great. It's just fumbling around for keys and handcuffs. They're and under all. a lot of pressure, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like were I in that same situation, I probably would have done like, I don't want to throw it too far past, so I'd just like throw the key into the middle of the room where neither of us could reach it. <laughs> They'd be like, well, great. Great. You've done this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, the, at, the, at which point I think the saw killer would probably be like, he'd probably get up slightly and just nudge it in some way. Because he, <laughs> he doesn't want to see like a... No. Do you think it'd get to a point where he'd sit up and just be like, okay, so this is essentially what I was going for. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. But you've kind of, you can't even get an ironic death out of this now because you've dropped the key in the middle of the room. So yeah, look, yeah. I'm going to give you the key. Yeah. And you can, it, it's not going to work obviously on your, yeah. on your manacle. So you, but you're going to learn a lesson about family or something. You're also supposed to look in your wallet under the photo to see that, uh, we've kidnapped your, your daughter as well. You haven't done that yet? If you could look in your wallet, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a clue. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many points of failure in his yeah. plan. It's <laughs> hilarious. But this this movie gave rise to, I think, two major things. Mm-hmm. One, escape rooms. Mm-hmm. Oh, which, yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan, if I'm honest. Okay. You? Uh, no, I don't mind him. Yeah. You know. If I wanted to escape a room, Mason, I'd use the door. Unless it's like maths based or something like oh, that. No, thank you. Oh yeah, that's true. I've done a couple. I'm like, of let ones. me out. <laughs> <laughs> I will not do the square root of anything. <laughs> and the other is uh, torture porn. Mm. Now this isn't, I would say, strictly a torture porn film. No, but it did kind of rebirth this genre in a much more gory way, and I think also to the detriment of horror films because there's a lot of just bad torture porn just films. A lot of, just a lot of drills of to the head. Yeah, shit like that. And obviously it culminates in things like the Human Centipede films and shit yeah. like that. This is more implied. Like, yeah. you know, we, we, don't re- we, don't, we don't see some drills going through a dude's head, but they could, they could have happened. Yeah, absolutely. One, if the cops hadn't intervened, and two, if they had the budget to put some drills through a guy's yeah. head. Like, you don't see him cut all the way through his leg. They do a little bit of blood, a little uh-huh. bit of special effects, and yeah, then yeah. you cut away and he's biting down on his shirt and screaming yeah, yeah. or whatever. And, and then know, later he's it. dragging himself in his incredibly long pant legs across, <laughs> That's right, across the like floor. With a weird foot shape in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, weird. But James Wan said that he didn't intend to make what was later referred to as a torture porn film. Mm. And it was really the sequels that kind of, they, uh, they get more explicit. and We're in for a treat then. Yeah, they're, they're more kind of, the creators of this are more hands off in the, mm-hmm. in the sequels too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, what I like about the, the Lee Whannell character, first of all, he's a, he's a private eye, isn't he? He's taking photos mm-hmm. of men who are, or messing around on their wives. Oh yeah. But one of the things he does, he's in a he's in a very well lit car park, and he just leans out and he goes, "Click!" Giant <laughs> flash goes <laughs> off. I mean, I know it's two thousand and four, but like maybe be a little, maybe turn the flash off if you're doing some some PI stuff, mate. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. My goodness. Do you want to talk about the twist ending though? Yeah. Do you remember? Did you see this at cinemas? It was at the all time? a dream. It was all a dream. Who knew what happened? What did, were you surprised at the time? Did you see it in cinemas? Where were you at? Uh, I saw it in cinemas, yeah. Mm. Remind me what the twist was. Well, <laughs> that he was on the ground. Jig, well, there's multiple twists. Jigsaw there's so many twists. All on twists. The floor. Uh, Benjamin Linus from Lost wasn't really the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, Jigsaw also has a little flavour saver. He's got one of those. Sure does, he, yeah. For some reason. It was a style at the time. Oh, man, Tobin Bell. What, what, he, he bloody lucked out getting that role, didn't he? He did to come back for 100 movies. Yeah, that's right. And he, he dies like in... What, the, one, a couple of films down the line, but yeah, he right. keeps showing up in yeah. various flashbacks and and whatever. But yeah, I, like you mentioned with that kind of fridge logic, I remember just being so caught up in the idea that this guy was on the floor the whole time mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and then he's, he's trapped in that room forever and what happens to Carrie Elwes? He drags himself away, but does Jigsaw kill him in the hallway? Turns out, no, he comes, oh. <laughs> comes back later in another film. But... Yeah, I just remember being like, wow, that's a really, that was a really like strong ending. How, how, did you think it still holds up even though you know the twist going in? Yeah, I think for the most part, mm. yeah. Because you look for little clues as well, don't you, along the way? Yeah. Like apparently there's the little clues that make up life. Exactly. I'm like reverse bear trap. Is the killer a bear? <laughs> He's out for revenge? <laughs> Oh my god, that would be the perfect weapon for a bear, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's things like you see apparently Tobin Bell's character, Jigsaw, Jigsaw Man, mm-hmm. Jigsaws, 
Jigsy. Um, Jigsy, as he was called in the Australian version. Mm-hmm. You see him holding the little, um, the pen light or whatever the thing. You see him when he's in the hospital bed. Ah, there's things like that. That's how he done got it. That's how he done to got it. To frame what's his face. That's right. And there's other things that kind of hint towards him being the killer, which I mm. completely blanked on going going into this movie. But anyway, Benjamin Linus from Lost. What, what, what kind of plan is like, shoot this guy's family? What did right. they do? <laughs> this sure. is what I'm talking about. Like, he's just... He's just a very mentally ill and angry man also, yeah, in addition uh-huh. to the cancer. Mm. He's not, well, I mean, yeah, well, it's not lessons, No, is that's it? true. I mean, that that is the ultimate. That 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 he, I feel like that is probably the, the biggest flaw of this film, is that, you know, the idea is like, well, I'm here to make you appreciate life by... You could... You could yeah. Maybe you could give me a gift certificate for a hot air balloon or something. <laughs> maybe that would... Get see a sunrise or something. That's a really be, good point. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. Why? Why am you've trapped me in this box full of razor wire? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and but then it falls down to well, he's crazy, isn't he? Look out. Yeah. But I guess that's also the idea of this character that yeah, he's a he's a psychopath. Yeah. Like he's not doing good work, is he? Really? No. I yeah. mean, except for those little those little model little model rooms with all the tiling. Yeah, but it kind of looks like a kid made it. Mm. <laughs> if I'm yeah, yeah. All right. But uh, anything else to say? No, it's pretty good. Got some sore trivia. Okay. No, Why? to you. I Why don't. would I have any sore trivia? All my sore trivia I put in here. Ah. Oh. Uh, well, Danny Glover survives because we played the video game. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> look like Danny Glover, but it's apparently the same character. So despite being shot by Benjamin Linus, uh, he comes back. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, So there cool. you go. Not a terrible game, yeah, by the way. Yeah, we played that, didn't we? Link it below if way you back want to check day, it out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this here every week. Every week. Every goddamn Tuesday. Rain, <laughs> hail, or shine. Mason. That's right. And if you want to see them early, if you go to bigsandwich.co and sign up. We do movie commentaries there. Also, we do a bunch of bonus podcasts. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, goes out there every Monday. We take a special drug. It slows down our heart rate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You think we're not doing a podcast. We're, ju- we're just lying down on the floor. Yep. But we're doing a podcast. We've actually done an amazing podcast, and that will be revealed at the end of the podcast. <laughs> That's right. My God, you got to. If you're love not it. enjoying, if you listen to the podcast, you're not enjoying it. <laughs> First, you're going to receive a massive electrical shock, <laughs> but then you're going to be like, "Wow, they did it! These guys know what they're doing." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but don't think about it after. No, never think about any of our podcasts <laughs> after we do them. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, anyways, if you do have any suggestions for Caravan of Garbage, we are doing Saw 2 next week. But aside from that, please let us know. Yeah. And uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. We'll see you guys at the next thing that happens here yeah. or a podcast. Grab that gem, you guys. If you value your life. Do you? You should. Yeah. It's yeah, important. Do it. Get yeah. out there. Yeah. Get a hot air balloon. No. Get up really early. We've when talked you... about this. They're too, <laughs> they go too early and they're too expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. want to see the Melbourne sunrise from that? Watch, yeah. your, watch your video on YouTube about hot air ballooning. Absolutely. That's That's like, do it any time There's a guy who's like dedicated his life to it. He'll tell you all about it. Don't mm. worry about it. Also, it's always strange to me that... Is this staying in? I don't know. But like people who propose in these situations. Yeah. But you're also stuck in a basket with like another person. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> I don't love it. All right, goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.